Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this episode of the Dan Dawson Show. So um, before I get into this story and I want to give you an overview, so I'm going to try something different. I'm going to bring up different YouTube videos so you can see for yourself uh, the chaos that's actually happening in these liberal cities. But before I get to that, uh, over on DB Presents the Underground News on YouTube, uh, me and my uh, co-host Brandon are going to be talking about our favorite Thanksgiving side dishes and desserts. Uh, the looting that's currently taking place in all these liberal cities. And we're also going to talk about the retired cop um, in LA who was protecting a news crew and was murdered. He was shot in the stomach. Um, I'll probably have a demonstration for that on you about why the vest doesn't protect the stomach. Actually, I've already done a video on it a long time ago, so I might just toss it in there. So we're going to get to this article. It's New York defunded. Our defund police candidate for governor has NYPD detail, home protected by military with M16s. Critics say Jumani Williams is hypocritical for living on a secure military base while being in favor of defunding police. This article is by Emma Colton for Fox News. <clears throat> These days, the only news source I really trust, which funny thing happened yesterday. So. One of my little sisters has been Democrat all her life. She told me something yesterday. She said the family, family property, my mom calls it the Dawson Plantation. <laughs> but, um, and my little sister told me it's the first time I ever voted Republican and I'm probably gonna keep voting Republican because of what's going on. So, and I think a lot of that is, um, she's the mother of my nephew who's a cop and, with the liberals treating cops like they do now that her son's a cop, I think she's kind of come over to our side. So yay, welcome over. Let's begin. A pro defund the police elected official running for governor in New York has sparked outrage after it was after it was revealed he travels New York City with an NYPD de detail and lives on a military base that provides round the clock security. Obviously it's very hypocritical Joseph Rowland, a 53-year-old Bay Ridge resident, told the New York Post of Jumanye Williams. I don't know. A lot of people name their kids as shit. Don't they know Dan's going to struggle pronouncing their names when I'm trying to do a YouTube show? You'd think they'd have some consideration, right? Yeah. I feel like it's a situation where regular citizens are not allowed to defend ourselves and people like our elected officials can. Well, what I would say to the elected officials is if you're so anti-police and so anti-gun that you should give up all those privileges that allow you to protect yourself. And he's exactly right. He is correct. See, it's not just us conservatives coming around now. See, now it's the everyday walk of people. That's what I keep saying. The Democrats have created too many storms on too many fronts with their crazy liberal socialist Nazi ideas. The average American isn't going for it. And I'm going to show you how people like this, how it actually plays out on the ground. One second. Anyway, I'm going to show you how it actually plays out on the ground and the real life effects that are affecting average everyday citizens and what they want done and show you how these people are not listening. So I'm gonna do something different today. I'm gonna jump through a lot of YouTube videos. So please bear with me. There's gonna be some downtime. I'll try to talk to it to give you something to listen to. Williams, a racial justice advocate, of course, was elected as the New York City public advocate in 2019 after previously serving on the New York City Council. Probably explains why New York City is such a shithole. New York, LA, I don't care what Seth Rogen says, they're shitholes. <sighs> He has previously described himself as a democratic socialist, there's that word again, Nazi, and is now running for governor of New York where he vows to be transformational or to bring transformational change to Albany according to his campaign website. Now, I'm gonna jump through these YouTube videos and show you just what this change is gonna look like. And it's not a promising future. Williams lives on the Fort Hamilton U.S. Army Garrison in Brooklyn. The New York Post, rep the New York Post reported was provided an NYPD security detail due to his position for the city. 
Imagine that, never in any threat of violence. Huh. The garrison requires anyone attempting entry to submit a background check and go through security checkpoints. Williams was one of the leading voices on defunding the NYPD last year and took issues with the city's agreement to cut $1 billion from the funds as insufficient. $1 billion, they're saying is insufficient. But see, see, that's what these liberals do. They're really evil. They don't care about you. They're just evil. All they care about is themselves. That's the very definition of evil. It's who they are. She did to leave. She's one of them. A representative for Williams said that the affordability of the housing appealed to Williams and his family. When we needed a new home for us, when he needed a new home for his family in 2019, they chose a publicly available unit in Fort Hamilton, not because of his position on a base, but because it offered the best unit for his family's price point and criteria, the representative told the New York Post. Look at this dumb Negro here. I sorry, I apologize. Look at this dumb black man here thinking this race baiting, I'm gonna get rich as soon as possible. Other black man cares about him, he doesn't. Williams lives in a corner town home with his wife, a lobbyist. Go figure, right? Go figure. And his stepdaughter for about 4,000 a month, the Post reported. The home offers views of Verasano Narrows, and enjoy perks of the base such as free parking, a swimming pool, a dry cleaners, a gas station, a barbershop, a bowling center, and various chain restaurants such as Einstein Bagels. Historic cannons, WW2 artillery, and modern Humvees are also on the Army installation. The garrison offers 228 homes, and 15% of them are occupied by civilians. The housing opportunities are open to the public but most New Yorkers are unaware of the option. What do you want to bet that his lobby, lobbyist wife pulled some strings and got them in there? See, this is what I'm talking about. The corruption is real, y'all. These apartments, these aren't apartments listed on Zillow. It's essentially a gated community with stunning waterfront views protected by tanks and soldiers with M16. An aerial official with knowledge of the housing uh, process told the Post. The suggestion that his work to protect, promote, and reimagine public safety would change with his address is belied by his record on these issues for over a decade. That work continues as he advocates for policies to advance community and neighborhoods citywide, Williams, Williams's representative added. Williams's office did not immediately respond to Fox News requests for comment on the matter. Quote, you're saying to fund the police, but yet you've got the police with you every day, taking you all over on the taxpayer's dime. And then you live on a military base and you're protected by the military. That's a joke, what a hypocrite. Not a lot of people get those luxuries. A frustrated police source added in comment to the New York Post. See, the big thing here is when the New York Post is bringing this type of stuff up, then it's serious. Now, what I want to do is take you to this tweet by Rashida Tlaib, right? This is Rashida Tlaib. It wasn't an accident. Accident. She's referring to the case where uh, the young lady police officer who, in my, my opinion, didn't have the proper experience to be in the streets. She was color guard and all this stuff. So basically an, a desk job. But with the defunding of the police, she was forced out into the streets, so probably without the proper training because she was training other people for a job that she had never worked. So, um, but she's talking about the one where the lady mistook her taser for her pistol. And that's what she's talking about here. And here's Rashida Tlaib, it wasn't an accident. It wasn't, it wasn't an accident. Policing in our country is inherently and intentionally racist. Dante Wright was met with aggression and violence. I am done with those who condone government funded murder, no more policing, incarceration, and militarization. It can't be reformed. We need this woman out of office. This woman is crazy, crazy. So 
You're going to get rid of our military. We'll be owned by China tomorrow. You're going to get rid of our incarceration, our policing. Meanwhile, her and her buddy, Cori Bush, are on national TV bragging about spending tens of thousands of dollars on armed security. Don't you find that ridiculous? Do you feel like they care for you? Do you feel like it? Now, really quick, I'm going to show you the reality of what goes on on the ground. Let's go right here. ...emergency funding to deal with the surge in gun violence. An op-ed in the Washington Examiner notes that the city's murder rate has increased 2,000%. That is, that is sad. And says, quote, this is what happens when people who are tasked with actually running a city embrace ridiculous ideologies to please activists. I would say that Portland residents deserve better, but this is the leadership they chose for their city, end quote. Now, who he's talking about that is the mayor, Mayor Willer in Portland. Remember, uh, just last summer, he was marching with the rioters and the looters till they came to his condo to burn it down. And then he all of a sudden changed his mind. This is the reality. The, um, you have citizens now arming themselves, fighting back. Let's look at this one. Like last week, when business owners near the airport told us that crime and scary situations are at an all time high and police response is at an all time low. When we call police, the response is, that their hands are tied and that they really can't do anything to help the situation. And then, you know. Alrighty. Take a look at this one. Students at the University of Chicago are speaking out about all the crime in that city. Campus reform interviewed several undergrads that are frustrated with the policies that they say are putting their safety at risk. One student calling out the mayor saying, quote, it's wrong that the politicians of Chicago are flat out lying to the people of the city by claiming crime is going down when it very much is on the rise and nothing is being done to stop it. Yet, despite the Let's look at this one. This is Los Violent Angeles, crime another is city. way up and claiming victims here in Los Angeles at a rate we haven't seen in decades. Already this year, at least 143 people have been murdered. Hundreds more have been shot. Our investigative reporter, Eric Leonard, has been tracking this alarming trend and what's behind it. So, ladies and gentlemen, you see their mentality and you see the effects of it. And it's happening in all these liberal cities. Crime is on the rise. I, I, I still have friends that live in Washington State. And every day, even in the little small sleepy towns, Lacey, places like that, Lacey's like a little small sleepy city. Used to be one of the best places to live in Washington. No, it's overrun by homeless and crime. Portland, Los Angeles, Chicago, Detroit, Washington, D.C., all these places are completely overrun. And this is what these feckless leaders want to do to the rest of the country which is why they won't win. They may gain a little hit weight like they did in Austin, Houston, and Dallas, but after a while, the local citizenry gets tired of it and they start fighting back. Um, saw one video, I couldn't go back and find it. This guy's walking around with a baton because one of the city council members of Portland um, told them the, the cops aren't there to intervene in crimes. They're not there to stop crimes. That's your job. And so he told her point blank, hey, I'm ready to fight crime. Let's get it. And that's what you're going to start seeing more of, you know, unless the crime goes down. And the crime won't go down as long as you have blue leaders in your, as long as you have liberal leaders in your city, as long as you have these socialists in control of politics, it's not going to change. But I just want to give you the hubs on that and show you what's really going on in the world, show you their mentality then show you some of, not all, but some of the results of their mentalities. Um, thank you. Uh, don't forget to tune in to DB Presents the Underground News. And as always, like, subscribe, share, and especially in these days and times, do what you gotta do.